What is going on guys? Grave here. Today I'm going to talk about daily activities, things you should be doing in the Elder Scrolls Online each and every day. I've been seeing a lot of people in the community lately talk about this. New players asking what should they be doing daily, veteran players asking other players, you know, if you've played for a long time, what do you guys do every day? So I kind of want to make a list of things that are really good activities to do each and every day. Keep in mind there's probably a lot of stuff that I don't even mention on this list that you can do every day, but and there's just so much to do in the Elder Scrolls Online in general if you really want to you know do all the different activities within the game but i want to go ahead and just kind of talk about some of the stuff that new players and veteran players alike could be doing each and every day so let's go ahead and hop right into it first of all your daily login rewards i know if you're a player that's played for a long time sometimes they are disappointing we've had a lot of months where we just don't really get anything that's kind of worth getting that's how a lot of veteran players feel but if you're a brand new player make sure that you're getting those daily login rewards you have xp bonuses there you have potions all kind of stuff that can help you out as a new player and if you're playing right now when this video comes out of course today is april uh the 6th 6th excuse me 2022 and this month's rewards april's rewards are really good for new players and veteran players so there's a lot of good stuff within the daily reward system sometimes not as great for longtime players as for new players but in my opinion it's still a good idea to log in each and every day and get those daily login rewards. Uh, event rewards and tickets. So if there's an event going on, make sure you're doing whatever you need to do to get your tickets every day. And if there's some kind of boxes you can get from these events, which there's usually always some type of box you can get, make sure you're you know doing as much of that as you can uh, as possible. Because these event boxes always have new rewards in them each and every year. And then some other things as well that you may not have if you're a, a you know a brand new player and even if you're a veteran player but make sure that you're doing whatever it takes to get your event tickets every day and you know farming as much as you can of these event boxes because there's some really great rewards in there that you may not have or some rewards that you can sell uh, to other players for gold also make sure that you're training your mount each and every day this is something that i used to do all the time and of course you all know i've played the game since it came out here on console pretty much so around seven years now that i play the game and I used to be really good at this. And at one point, I did have 18 characters. Since the armory system has been added, I've knocked my character load down to about 15 because a lot of the characters that I had uh, that were extra, I felt like I could just make an extra load out on some of my other ones with the armory system. One day, I may have up, back up to 18, but I used to always be really good about going in, logging in on all of my characters and ranking up their mount speed, the stamina, and of course, the bag space. We know that takes a really long time because it takes 60 per slot. So there's a lot of days that you have to log in on each character. But make sure if you only have one character, if you have five, you have ten, no matter what it is, make sure that you're logging in and ranking up those characters' uh, amounts. I, like I said, I've gotten really bad about this over the years. Out of the 15 characters I have now, about 10 or 11 of them are completely done. The other four or five I just kind of quit doing. So now when I get on those characters and use them, their mounts are really slow. They don't really have a lot of bag space. And that's something that I should have done uh, years ago to finish those out. And I didn't, so make sure that you're doing those each and every day. You'll, you'll you'll be grateful for it in the long run. Doing your random daily dungeon or your daily battlegrounds, I know it can be a pain. Sometimes the queue is really long. If you're a new player, you may get kicked out of the daily dungeon. I understand why players don't like doing it, but when you feel comfortable enough to do those, I would recommend doing one or both. I mean, both is probably the best if you do your daily uh, dungeon and your daily random battleground, you know, like on multiple characters, because you can do them on multiple characters, you can get a lot of transmute crystals. What I do personally for me is I do my daily uh, random dungeon on at least five to 10 characters every day. That's what I try to do. So five at the minimum, 10 at the most. Uh, that way, you know, you're getting 10 transmute crystals per trip. So that's a lot of transmutes. And um, we can hold, you know, either 500 if you don't have ESO plus and a thousand if you do. And you can use a lot of those transmit crystals now. We have the sticker book system where you can go in and just recreate the items you want instead of having to farm them. So you'll you'll burn through transmute crystals. Uh, even I, I still do now because I like to test a lot of different things out. But some veteran players may not have to as much as they used to, you know, use them. But if you are a new player or if you're like myself and you like to test things out, you're going to go through transmute crystals a lot each and every, you know, week or month. When it comes to uh, some other things you can do every day, that I would recommend probably doing daily or at least weekly, and that's going to be your surveys or your master writs. If you have a lot of characters like I do, and you do daily crafting writs on all of them, you probably have as many surveys and master writs as I do. <laughs> you probably have tons of them. And once again, I've gotten into a really bad habit of stacking them on my farming character, and I'll have hundreds of surveys and hundreds of master writs to do, and it gets to be a little bit tedious and a little bit frustrating. 
years ago I had a really good system where I would every week uh, I'd pick a day and each week I would go and do my master writs and my surveys that I had collected that week some players like to do this daily so if you can get on a, a system where you can get uh, all of your daily uh, or all of your excuse me master writs or your uh, surveys done daily or weekly that's probably the best idea because when you start saving them up it gets to be a really uh, big problem later down the road if you have a lot of different characters you do your writs on each and every day so make sure you're doing those daily or at least once a week if you are new to the game the next two is definitely gonna, things are going to be for you make sure that you're doing your undaunted your fighters guild and your mages guild daily quest each and every day those take a while to rank up uh, i know if you're a, a veteran player and your power leveling characters you may not need those as much on each and every character but if you are a new player i would recommend getting those all done the mages guild is going to take a while but a lot of those passives are very helpful if you're on a magic style character the undaunted passives are great for every character no matter what you're on and of course this is going to take a bit of time now the undaunted is a little bit quicker than it used to be uh, considering with the update 33 they did kind of speed up that process and change some things about how you gain undaunted xp but just keep in mind, if you are a new player, do those each and every day. If you're trying to rank up a companion, you're going to have to do those anyway. So you kind of can kill two birds with one stone there. You can get your companion done and also rank those three things up for yourself or for your in particular or that particular character that you're on. Um, researching traits at your crafting stations is also a great thing for new players. Or if you're just a person that's played for a long time and decided to get into crafting, make sure that you have something researching at every table. So you're blacksmithing, you're woodworking, your clothier you know, uh, your jewelry stations, make sure you're researching things at all of these at all times. Never let it fall off because once again, this is something kind of like the training of your mount that takes a really long time to get done. And of course, you can get up to where you have three things researching at once. Once you get a few things, a few points into crafting, and I understand that it's kind of hard to do with limited skill points to begin with. But no matter if you have one thing or the ability to, uh, you know, research three things at each table, make sure there's something always researching. That way you can get it done as quickly as possible. Make sure you're also, you know, if you are a new player, buying bag space and bank space. That's something that will help you later down the road. I know it does get expensive eventually, but anytime you can upgrade your bag space and your mount space, uh, your bag space and your bank space, I said mount space, excuse me, uh, make sure that you're doing that. So that way you can have those upgraded uh, because it will help out in the end. There's never enough bag space or bank space in this game, by the way, even if you have it maxed out and have ESO plus, in my opinion, but make sure you get those maxed out. Doing your endeavors, uh, that's a great thing too, to do daily. So your daily and weekly endeavors are always good. I know a lot of people feel like the endeavor system takes too long to actually get enough seals to get a reward, but just keep in mind, if you can get them done each day, most of them are fairly easy. Make sure you're getting those daily and weekly endeavors done. Um, story quest and side quest, sky shards, if you are a new player, Make sure that you're going in, doing your main zones, your side zones, your small zones, doing the side story, the main story, finding sky shards in those zones. This is going to give you a lot of skill points. It's going to help you out later down the road for all the different things you may want to unlock. That way you don't have to respect your character multiple times and waste the gold. Another thing that you can do, of course, is farming mats or scrying. Now, I know if you're brand new to the game, scrying takes a while to get all that done. Uh, if you're a veteran player, I would recommend anytime you get something to scry, go ahead and do it because we all know... They only have 30 days on them. They have a 30-day limit. Once that 30 days is up, those that thing, that in particular item is gone. So you want to make sure you scry it as soon as you get it. And also, uh, if you need to farm material, extra material is always great. Whether you have ESO Plus and you have the crafting bag to hold it in, or if you have multiple characters like a, mu a mule style, uh, style character where you can hold a lot of different materials on, having extra material if you need it, that's always something you can do daily. And a few other things you can do is doing your dailies um, just in different zones. Right now, the Deadlands is really popular because all the new furniture and recipes have come out. But you can still do dailies in all of the older zones. Once the new High Isles chapter comes out in the summer, a lot of people will be doing those dailies because of the new motifs and the new uh, furnishing recipes that will come from there. But there's a great, um, or a lot, a really great way, I guess, to get a lot of different furnishing recipes and a lot of different motifs in the game by doing your dailies in each and every, every zone. And last but not least, joining a guild uh, is a really great thing to do. Whether whether it's a social guild or a uh, you know a trading guild, that's a great thing to do as a new player or a veteran player because there's a lot of people in there that can help you out, teach you how to trade, teach you just about the game, help you with doing certain things. Doesn't really matter what it is. But it's also a great option of something you can look into. And plus, you can get some people to help you out doing some of these dailies. Maybe you're 
you know, your daily dungeons, whatever the case may be. If you have a group of people, it goes a lot faster. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. And of course, if you'd like to hit the like, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.